Welcome to Worship in the Word. We're so glad that you joined us. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you for your holiness and for who you are. We worship you.
cries out to praise your holy name, the rocks will cry out. The mountains will cry out, the mountains will bow, the oceans will roar. There will always be some sound of worship to your holiness. We thank you, Lord, that you and your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. Your mercy is so deeply connected to your holiness. We thank you, Father, that in your mercy we are invited into the Holy of Holies because of your mercy, because of your kindness, because of your love. We get to stand in awe because you had mercy on us, Father. In your mercy, Lord, we're invited into this holy place, the secret place, the place where Jesus said, when you go and pray, go into your room and close the door, and what you pray in secret will be rewarded in public. When we're under the mercy care of you, Lord, we are in your holy place. We are separated, set apart, sanctified, made useful for your service. Lord, we pray that people will be established not only in your mercy, but also in your holiness. That today as we stop and we join together across the, uh, the United States and even in other nations, Lord, that we would link arm in arm and make a declaration that in spite of everything that may not be good in our lives right now, you are always good. Your mercy endures every day. And your mercy, if you haven't put this together, God's mercy is closely connected to holiness. There are several scriptures that have the two words hand in hand and then love and then kindness they're connected because it is through his mercy that Jesus was sent for our lives, for our salvation. Psalms 5, 7 says, but as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship towards your holy temple or in awe of you, I will worship towards your holy temple. Another version says, because of your great love, I can come into your temple because I fear and respect you. I can worship in your holy temple. So there's love, there's holiness, there's the fear of the Lord, there's the awesomeness of who he is that we put all these connections together and see God in a greater magnitude. And then we know him in the simplicity uh, that we have learned him in. And he is more complicated, yet he's simple. He is more kind, yet he's just. So Father, we bow before you today, declaring your holiness, declaring your mercy, pulling on your mercy. Can you just with me, church, all across, wherever you're listening from, wherever you might see this later, just pull on the mercy of God, his kindness, his love, where his restorative, redemptive power exists, and just pull on that for whatever circumstance you might be facing right now. Father, we pull on you. You are the reason we have our breath. You're the reason that we live. Draw us in. Surround us by your holiness. Let us see because we are surrounded by your holiness. As a child of God, we're in it. And I pray right now that if you don't understand that, that you would take a breath even right now and just stop and say, Lord, reveal your holiness to me. Because the word of God says, be holy for he is holy. So Lord, we enter the holy place, the holy of holies, the secret place. Can it be us in right now for these next 25 minutes, Lord? Would you lock us into the secret place with you, abiding under your shelter? Yeah, we love you, Lord. Kiss you.
the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the righteousness, that you are Christ Jesus, the righteousness of God. And we thank you. Yeah. And we thank you. We take time, Lord, today in our day. God, I pray that we'll carry this with us for the rest of the week, that in our minds all day long, we will remember your wonderful deeds, your wonderful works your majesty yeah. all that you've done in our past Lord you'll do greater in our future for those who are yielded to your spirit those who are yielded to your kingdom call those who are yielded to your will Lord you will do great and wonderful deeds in and through us signs and wonders will follow those who follow you Jesus so we declare that there is a breakthrough coming. There is something greater than we can imagine about to break through in this new season over these next couple of months. And Father, I pray for those who don't know you intimately, who have no clue that there are prophetic things happening today, that there are prophetic words, prophetic statements, prophetic uh, gestures, prophetic visions, and things that we have no clue until you have released them into us, God, that are about to come into our lives. Let us be a people who are pressed into you, listening, ready, willing, waiting, because you are marvelous. The, the whole earth is groaning for the manifestations of your sons and daughters. God, let us manifest your glory. Let us manifest your love and your kindness and your mercy and what little bit that we can give in our humanness, Lord. Let us, let us be yielded and manifesting your kingdom's will here on earth.
bubbling up of the power of God that if we just knew him in his wonder and knew him in his awesome power and knew him in the fear of the Lord and submitted to him in those places, we would be delivered. We would be made whole. We would be made strong, able to endure all trials and tribulations. people that we know that they're not getting set free and and my husband and I really rack our brains at times trying to figure out prayerfully and with wisdom why people remain stuck in mental attitudes and I really believe it's because we haven't embraced this God that we're singing about we don't know him like this we haven't reflected on our testimonies. We all have one. We've been saved and delivered so many times. We probably don't even recognize it. So many times that God has reached in to forgive you, to reach, he's reached in to love you and to free you from multiple things in your past. More than likely, you've had many experiences, but you haven't attributed them to the king of the universe to the creator of all this. You, you haven't attributed them to God who loves you. And I, I just pray that we would give glory to God, that we would take our intellect out of the way for a moment and stop looking at our own ability, what we've done, what we've accomplished, how we've built, how we saved. And then we would look that without God, if you, especially if you're a believer, even if you're not a, a believer, it's still the same way, but you don't know that because you don't know the God that we know. But if you are a believer, you should know the God that we know. The God that we know is the God who is supernaturally lining up every path in your life for you to fulfill your destiny that was written in your book. And so when you know him in awe and you know him in wonder and you know that he is just like he could do whatever he wanted to do in a moment like he could wipe out this nation this hurricane that's hitting in florida could take the he could move that in such a way it could take the whole everybody out if he wanted to if he needed to if he felt it was time to there's so many things god could do in his in, in his destructive power but instead he chooses to save and to heal and to rescue and to redeem and to rebuild and restore that's his choice because he is always love and he was always good so god i ask you today will you forgive us for taking your glory for refusing to acknowledge you in the rescuing yeah that's our prayer for today as we worship this awesome, amazing God, that we would take a moment to say, yeah, we, we recognize we have taken glory where glory does not belong to us. We co-partner with you, Lord. We co-labor with you. We are ready to reconnect with you today. Every place that's been disconnected in our souls, Lord God, would you bring your spirit in in such a way to manifest the tightness, the knitting together between your spirit and ours that we would become one again. Yeah, as one. Jesus name.
just weeps for those who don't understand this. So many of us by now should be teachers and instead still needing the milk. So many still immature and have no clue who this God is. And we've boxed him into religion and we've boxed him into our own belief system and we've boxed him into a powerless God that is like a genie that is only there for us to rub on him a little bit to say, I want, I will. This is not the God that he doesn't even pay attention to that. He doesn't listen. He is the God who laughs at that kind of mocking. So Lord, I pray over these next few weeks as you begin to move in a different way and as your rhythm here on the earth and in our hearts begin to change, that ears and eyes would be open, that you would reestablish those who are drifting apart and roots have come loose. I just, I just see some of the believers that your roots have become very loose. And even some have rotting roots because you have intended to your position in Christ with the word of God. And you haven't fed your soul the proper nourishment with the word. And so now some are getting root rot. And if that continues, eventually that tree or that plant will die and wither off and be no more. And that's the state of the beginning of backslidden people, fallen trees that should be trees of righteousness, falling over because their roots have rotted, because of immaturity, because you can't live on milk forever, because you need the meat of the word. And I pray for the body of Christ that the nourishment that is necessary to bring us to a deeper revelation of this glorious, mighty God would begin to develop in our churches, in our Bible studies, in our personal private lives, that we would want more, that we would even demand more from our gatherings that we're getting, that we would hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we would begin to lean not on our own understanding, especially in this season, but we begin to live on every word that the Father speaks. Yeah, I just speak to dead bones to arise, that God's breath of life would enter in and establish you back to life. Yeah. God help us call in the laborers to help those who need a hand back out of those pits. And we just cry out. If the rocks, we don't want the rocks to cry out, Lord, we cry out that you are holy. And we, we are surrounded by your holiness and by your glory. And whether the world knows it or not, we know it, we believe it. If they laugh at us, if they make fun of us, if they mock us, we will not be moved. We believe this God. We believe you are God. There is no other God besides you, Jesus. This is it, you are God. Holy Spirit, you are in us. You are our comforter. You are our counselor. You guide, you direct, you equip, you correct. So Lord, correct this body of people before it's too late in Jesus' name. Oh, you know. 
imagine what this earth would be like if we were not rooted and established in the love of God, which is his mercy. Yeah. Lydia, I just kind of hear you just keep singing into that and just see that watering in the saints with his mercy that they would begin to drink of that well right now in Jesus' name all across the nation, those who can hear us and those who can't, that they would begin to draw again, that those roots that are getting rotten would begin to draw on fresh water, fresh rivers of living water to, to begin to reach out and tap into this Jesus that we know has saved us and reach in. Holy Spirit, we draw them. We, I just see just like there are, there are roots in us that want to reach out we want it you know the what the, what the roots do they grow towards the water they look for water god make us look for water come draw us into the water draw these people lord that we love and we've seen them backslide draw them in by that mercy isn't available even if you messed up really bad you can get back up and say I need your mercy today and so Lord we just release mercy and we declare your wonders and your awesomeness we embrace the fear of the Lord in this house and we pray your church will too in Jesus name 